Alright, so in this video I'm gonna be explaining another approach for not only event extraction but also relation extraction and we are using cross-lingual structure transform. So I'm gonna be focusing on this paper in 2019. The identification of complex semantic structures such as events and entity relations already a challenging information extraction task is doubly difficult from sources written in under-resourced and under-annotated languages. We investigate the suitability of cross-lingual structure transfer techniques for these tasks. We exploit relation and event-relevant language universal features, leveraging both symbolic including part of speech and dependency paths and distributional including type representation and contextualized representation information by representing all entity mentions event triggers and context into this complex and structured multilingual common space using graph convolutional networks we can train a relation or event extractor from source language annotations and apply it to the target language. So this is an example of information network which is constructed by event which are in blue. For example, the transport is an event and the relation are the green dashed, as you see, there is a rela relation between them. So this is a multilingual. The first give the tree representation because we have a tree because we have a dependency parse. So we give it to C and convolution neural networks. And then we do max pooling, then concatenation. Then we get our arguments using softmax. The same thing for uh, relation. So everything you can get both rela relation and uh, event extraction. In contrast, we want to say that GCN is better than tree LSTM. GCN can cover more complete contextual information from dependency parses because for each word it captures all parse tree neighbors of the word rather than just the child nodes of the word. Using this shared encoder, we treat the two tasks of relation extraction and event argument role labeling as mappings from the latent space to relation type and to event type and argument role respectively. So our cross-lingual structure transform approach consists of four steps. First, we convert each sentence into a language universal tree structure based on universal dependency parsing. For each node in the tree structure, create a representation from concatenation of multilingual word embedding, language universal part of speech embedding, dependency role embedding, and entity type embedding, so that all sentences independent of their language are represented within one shared semantic space. Adopt GCN to general, generate contextualized word representations by leveraging information from neighbors derived from dependency parsing tree. And then using this shared semantic space, train relation and event argument extractors with high resource language training data and apply the resulting extractors to, to texts of low resource languages that do not have any relation or event argument annotations. So we define the dependency base tree for a sentence as a graph, this graph that has some vertices and edges. Then our GCN encoder is based on the monolingual design of 2018 article. 
So when we say a sub a ij is equal to one, this adjacent matrix, it means that denotes that entry of i and j when it is one. It denotes the presence of directed edge from i to j, from node i to node j in dependency tree. Initially, each node contains distributional information about the ith word, including word embedding, embedding for symbolic information, including it as part of speech tag, dependency relation, and entity type. So we represent initial representation as we, we just add them, all of them. Uh, we concatenate them, then at the case layer of convolution, the hidden representation is derived is derived from the representation of its neighbor. So for the case layer, you get it from the k minus ones layer. And w is the weight bias and B is bias that you should learn. And the denominator denotes the normalization factor to neutralize the negative impact of node degree. So the final hidden representation of each node after the case layer is the encoding of each word in our language universal common space and incorporates information about neighbors up to k hub k hubs because case layer by itself is, is just uh, saying that it is representing k hubs of your dependency tree of course and then the gcn encoder generates the final hidden representation so the objective that we want to minimize is, is this one. First we do max pooling, then the result to com be combined is contextualized sensor with mentioned information. Then a linear layer, we have a linear layer to generate a combined representation of these concatenated results, and then a softmax output, the sigma for relation type classification. So R stands for relation, loss of relation. And this is the weight that should be learned. For application and event role labeling, it's almost the same, we just need to know for example, what is the relation between this argument and this trigger, then everything is the same. Where first we concatenate everything, and then n, of course, is the number of event mentions. We do it for all of them. And the data sets, this AC25 is very popular if you want to do event extraction and you can get it not only relation but also events and what is interesting is uh, their learning rate is 0.1 dropout is quite large and pooling function is the simple max pooling Word embedding, 300, part of speech, 30. Hidden dimension size is 200. Number of layers, when number of layers of GCN is two, it means that it represents two, two hops in the dependency tree. And you see the performance that For example, if your training is on English, then you suddenly you go to Chinese, then it becomes a problem. It's, it's hard to generalize. 
and for event argument if you are in English and then you go to Chinese the same problem it's very hard to generalize these are the font scores